Thanks. Okay. What are discourse communities? Ryan P. Shepard's What Reddit Has to Teach Us About Discourse Communities describes them as a porous, amorphous, and often ill-defined group of people who use the social conventions of a discourse. He goes on to say that discourse communities are defined by the common ways in which they communicate. These common ways usually result from a shared set of purposes, certain values the community is trying to instantiate, or certain goals the community is trying to achieve. Want the short version? A discourse community is a group that has a sense of cultural intricacy to its discussions. Every community has its own history, one that its members will know more about than the average person. When you join a new friend group, you'll start to pick up on the inside jokes and references that aren't quite as surface level. When asked to analyze a new discourse community, I felt moved to bring to light a pretty strange one. Assumedly, if I walked up to you on the street and began talking about the DeviantArt adoptable OC community, you'd have more than a few questions. I more than likely need to explain a couple things first. For one, what is DeviantArt? On August 7th, 2000, Scott Jarkoff, Matt Stevens, and Angela Satira founded DeviantArt.com. It began as a hub for people who enjoyed visually modifying computer applications to be able to share their work with one another. Despite its initially niche concept, the site quickly bloomed into a hub for sharing art of all mediums. The online art community has grown into all corners of the internet over the years, and while DeviantArt has grown to face significant competition from platforms like Twitter and Instagram, the last 24 years have left the site as one of the longest running of its kind, and with a deeply storied history. What is an OC? An OC, or original character, is a common term amongst online artists. It's simply the term used for characters an artist comes up with. I've always had mixed feelings on the term. I prefer to refer to them just as characters, especially since the whole original qualifier is kind of relative. Part of me feels stressing the original part feels like overcompensation, as if a character's design being inspired by another is avoidable. Nothing's 100% original. When we're creating, we're always influenced by all the other stories we've taken in, so everything's inspired. What are adoptables? Indeed, the golden question. At its simplest, an adoptable is a character, or OC, created by an artist with the purpose of being put up for sale. It is common practice for artists to make use of bases, a drawing template of sorts, in order to quickly make batches of adoptables and put them up for sale at, at the same time. Some artists have a significant variety in their character designs, while others may simply post recolored images of a dog and sell them for cheap. While flat-out OCs are generally the most popular kind, there are most certainly subcategories within the adoptable world. For instance, furry slash anthro slash feral characters. Of course, with most art communities, there's a massive furry subgroup presence in the adoptable world. Furry, anthro, and or feral adopts are incredibly common and are considered a pillar of the adoptable community. Another big one is mystery, surprise, gotcha adopts. Mystery adopts are just that, a mystery. Instead of showing the OC in question, the artist will put up something like a present box or egg stylized in a way that resembles the character. The design is revealed to the buyer after its purchase. Phantom adopts. There are often fandom-driven adoptables. There are ones you'd expect, like fan Pokemon or My Little Pony characters, but when scrolling through DeviantArt, you'd be surprised at the sheer frequency of Lion King adopts. A really bizarre amount. There are other slightly more niche forms of adoptables, such as non-character adopts like outfits or weapons, and species adopts. This is a bit of a tangent, but Oshi species are a strange practice. An artist will come up with a type of species, make and sell OCs for them, and pre often prevent other artists from drawing their species without permission, which seems counterintuitive. If someone liked your creation enough to draw it, wouldn't you want them to be free to do so? Anyway, how does the business work? They're often sold in an auction format in which the highest bidder after 24 hours of the adoptable being posted is declared the winner. However, adoptables can also be listed as OTA, which means offer to adopt, a common practice in which the artist will accept different kinds of offers like money, Deviant art points, art, and even other adoptables. Exchanges involving money are usually done through external payment sites like PayPal. DeviantArt has an on-site currency system called points. They're purchased with real money, with one point being equal to one cent. You can exchange points for a variety of things on the site, including DeviantArt memberships. Points are often also exchanged between artists for art. As you can imagine, the points are frequently accepted as payment in the purchasing of adoptables. If the buyer is another artist, the seller may accept art from them in exchange for the adoptable. This can take several forms, such as drawing fan art of one of the seller's OCs or asking the artist for a request and drawing it in turn. Artists may make specific demands regarding what the consumer does with the character after it's been sold, such as preventing its resale or restricting its commercial use. What's the point? There's some debate as to what the point of adoptables even are. I found they often appeal to people who enjoy collecting things such as myself. There's certainly a novelty to them, and I'm always happy to throw some money in artists' way. They also appeal to people who want characters for stories or ha to have a mascot for themselves but don't enjoy drawing. They can also be an effective way for artists to hone their character design skills. With the help of bases, some artists will churn out batches of adoptables at a time. In order to keep their audience interested, they need to find a compelling style and be able to iterate on it, which takes some serious practice. 
Adoptables are also a way to potentially make some quick money, assuming you've got an audience who's willing to buy. Adoptables are a very bizarre thing. They appeal to my inner collector, but I also think the concept starts to fall apart when you think about it for a little too long. There's nothing stopping anybody from seeing an adoptable with a design they like and riffing off of it to make their own character. This is especially true for higher-end adoptables that can sell for up to hundreds of dollars. My hard limit price-wise is like 15 bucks, but I really have to like its design. I tend to nab the cheaper ones that range from like 5 bucks. I don't have much trouble justifying those impulse purchases since they're technically supporting artists, even if it's by a pretty minimal amount. It's difficult to separate myself from the perspective of being an artist, but I also can't quite understand the idea of buying an OC rather than making my own if I really needed one for a project. And yet, I still buy them. A very peculiar branch of this business involves AI-generated adoptables. Since the data required to generate AI art is non-consensually sourced from other artists, putting a price tag on an AI-generated adoptable raises some ethical concerns. Someone who generates an adoptable certainly shouldn't have any grounds to make money off of it, especially in the same space as artists who legitimately draw and design theirs. These questions of ethical pricing stretch beyond AI-generated art. In many ways, the value of art has always been subjective. One person can think nothing of a famous painting, while another would be willing to pay thousands upon millions for it. Adoptables are no different. An adoptable with five minutes of effort put into it can be priced at $200, while a higher effort and well-designed character can be sold for pocket change. The monetary value of art is decided partially by the artist's own discretion. After all, they know better than anyone the effort or lack thereof that went into the work. The money value of art is also partially decided by how much the consumer is willing to pay for it. It is common practice to price products as high as customers are willing to pay, which is why popular artists can afford to take commissions or sell adoptables for hundreds of dollars at a time. While unorthodox, the DeviantArt Adoptable OC community is a sort of discourse community. Unlike discussion-focused sites like Reddit, DeviantArt does take some searching to find community discussions, but they're out there across comment sections, private messages, forums, text-based posts called journals, and topic-focused groups. DeviantArt groups allow users to connect over shared interests, no matter how niche. Groups are a space for fans of a topic to gather and share art related to their interests, and it's a way to curate your DeviantArt experience as a whole. There's also a feature called affiliates in which groups can advertise and support one another. There are most certainly adoptable groups. The most popular adoptable group, Adopt and Adoptables, has just under 50,000 members, and subsequently popular groups like Adopt Oasis and Adopt Acuity have tens of thousands of members as well. These groups are generally devoted to sharing and promoting adoptables, providing a space to browse a seemingly endless catalog of characters in all sorts of styles. Adoptables are a strange, strange business. One I feel begins to make less sense the more you think about it. It makes much more sense to come up with one's own character rather than pay for someone else's, even more so if the artist applies user restrictions to the OC in question. The ownership of these characters is also relative, especially for artists that make minor alterations to established, well-known characters and call them their original character. This applies even more so to AI-generated adoptables. But even for legitimate adoptable OCs, if you find yourself taken with the design of someone else's character, what's stopping you from taking inspiration from their idea and making your own OC? I'm not trying to topple the adoptable industry or encourage art theft, though I'd say stealing AI-generated adoptables is no more unethical than trying to sell them. I'm simply fascinated by how a subcommunity built on such a shaky, honor code-esque foundation could persist all of these years. Perhaps it truly is a way for artists to interact and support with one another, or maybe consumers are too captivated by novelty to think harder about their purchases. Regardless, the adoptable community has shown itself to be a devoted one, and while DeviantArt is arguably their biggest hub, they've planted roots on several platforms, Twitter and Instagram being major ones. While it may take some digging, I think they're worth rooting around for. Might as well relax and throw a couple bucks at something silly once in a while. If you support an artist in the process, it's a win-win.